same deal for the combination. Okay, the ones that get important, single replacement, double replacement, neutralizations, and officially combustion, which I'll guess I'll go ahead and write in on this at the bottom. Okay. Those four reactions are a little bit more challenging than the rest, so we'll give them a little star. They have stars because you are required to predict products. Right, so that makes them more difficult. Not only do you have to recognize them, but you have to predict those products okay, for all four of those. Okay. <clears throat> Layering onto this, difficulties. The single replacement and the double replacement become a little bit more challenging for slightly different reasons. Uh, you need phase information. in slightly different contexts, but you need phase information for both of those. Technically, the neutralization, the combination, you could specify it, but I'm not all that worried about those. Okay. Uh, for the single replacement and, actually, yeah, for the single replacement and the double replacement, as effectively comparing back to our phase information, we also need to decide if the reaction occurs. What do I mean by that? We drew products, so doesn't that mean the reaction occurs? No. We're just saying, well, if this was a double replacement and these were the reactants, this is what would happen. We're just following through the motions. We aren't actually deciding that that is going to be the case. Okay? That isn't actually what happens. If I won a million dollars, these were the things I'm going to do. That doesn't mean I'm going to win a million dollars. Right? So we're looking at what would potentially happen with the single replacement and the double replacement. We're actually responsible for deciding, does that happen? Right? Which is an extra layer of difficulty on top, which requires more information on your end. Okay? But to start all of these, you have to be able to predict what type of reaction it is. So everything you look at should be, that is a single replacement, that's a double replacement, that's a combination. The instant you have that information, you can then start to say, oh, now I need to predict more information. Make sense? I'm going to say that was a yes. So let's take a look at some reactions. Because I don't think we looked at these, right? Is that a yes? No? No. Okay. So let's take a look. What's the first one? That would be really helpful if we'd memorized them or if we had this slide in front of us. Thankfully, we don't have this, or unthankfully, we don't have this slide in front of us. What do we have in front of us? Your notes, and in theory, the whiteboards with all the correct answers on them. And when we go through and look at each of the reactions, what reactions could potentially match that first one? Okay. Nothing else could potentially match that first one. In a single displacement, how many pieces do I start with? Two. How many pieces do I end with? Does that match? Yes. That's two and two. Yeah. Double replacement. Neutralization, which isn't on that one. Okay. Uh, where's my combination? There's a combination. I start with two pieces. Don't I start with two pieces? But you end up with one in a combination. In a combination, I end with one. In the reaction, I end with two. So what we're trying to do is narrow that down. Just look for patterns that fit. Yes, a lot of you jumped immediately straight to the answer. Okay? But not everybody is there. Look for those patterns and adjust and find them. Okay? Combustion is the one that best fits that. It takes carbon bound to hydrogen, reacts it with a second molecule of oxygen, very specifically for our combustion, to produce CO2 and water. That is exactly what that reaction shows. No other general form of our reaction matches that. Make sense? Okay. So let's get rid of that one. What makes the next one difficult? No, the very next one after combination. It says lithium metal. It's just words. Oh, God, too bad this isn't an English class where we might have to, like, read and translate that information. 
into some chemistry. Oh, wait, yes, it is. Step one. Translate the words into the atomic symbols. Lithium metal. L-I. L-I. It's phase. Solid. Reacts with. Plus. Plus. Side. Plus. BR. Bromine gas. BR. Why are we saying two? It is not because it is a gas. It's because it's a diatomic element. Which I don't think we talked about yet, but it's in the textbook. Is that like O2? It's like O2, N2. Okay, we'll come back and look at those. To produce. Well, that's a reaction arrow. Okay, this one becomes challenging. Okay, to figure out what this would do, we would have to know what type of reaction is happening here. Okay. Arguably, Braxton has an interesting point here because he spoke up so loudly. What did I say? I didn't say anything. I know you didn't. I'm just calling you out. Sorry. You are not responsible for predicting the product of this one. That doesn't mean you can't. So we go through and look at our reaction types. What does this one appear to match? It matches combination. What else does it match? Okay. Remember, think superficially first. Okay. V and David wrote really nice and big over there, so let's take a look at theirs in green. No offense to everybody else, but neutralization at the top. It says H-A-B-O-H. That's two things. Do I have two things? Yes. Do I have H? No. Do I have O-H? No. So what does that mean? It's not neutralization. Combination. A plus B. That matches. Okay. Decomposition. A, B goes to something else. So I'm starting with one thing, going to two. I don't know what I'm going to. What am I starting with? Two things. Can it be a decomposition? No. no. Single replacement. Starting with two things. Possible. Double replacement. Starting with two things. Also possible. Combustion. Yeah, that's starting with two things, but yeah, go for it. There's no H or O. Cool. Okay. So I'm now down to, with this one simple line, either a combination, a single replacement, or a double replacement, just based off of the number of pieces that I have. So look at the double replacement. It says A, B, and C, D, because I'm doing a double replacement. Those two things have to trade. Do I have that format in this equation? No. At best, I have A plus BB. Right? Everybody see that? So double replacement doesn't make sense. By putting in that general form, I already then can go to the single replacement and say, also doesn't match. Okay? The form I've got here is at best A, BB. So it's not single replacement. It's not double replacement. It's not all the others. All I have left is combination. I have to combine them together to make a product. So if I was going to predict this, I would jam lithium with bromine together. And we could go through and call that lithium bromide. And we would know it's lithium bromide because of nomenclature, which we're now all experts in because you're turning in that lab starting today. Starting today, if you're in the Tuesday lab. Okay, I'm like, what? Can we add more information? Yeah. What's that more information? You balance them. I would argue we don't even want to look at balancing yet. Okay, you can... Uh, but balancing might be on the tip of your tongue because of you why. You put down how many of each of them there are. Okay. If we go through and look at what we start with, okay, we start to jump to that balancing. We say, oh, it's lithium and BR2. And now we're just saying it's Li, lithium, and just one BR. Oh, that can't be right. That can't be right. It's got to be two BR. Because it had Br2 on the other side. Why is there a 2 next to the bromine on the reactant? Because it is a diatomic element. And when bromine is by itself, it needs to have that 2. Is bromine by itself? No. 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 So the reason that we put the 2 there is no longer present here. Which means? You don't need it. Don't put the 2 there. At least not for that reason. What is the reason you would be allowed to put the 2 there? 
Okay, and this is where we're going to... Balancing become, becomes a weird word here because we are used to seeing balancing in the chemical reaction. So as soon as people start saying to balance, we're like, oh, I have to now balance each side of the equation. That's not what you're asking, though. What you're saying is making sure the product is correct, the formula is correct, okay? That the charge equals zero, yeah. which, yes, is balancing your product, but yeah. we, we need a different word, okay? okay? Because balancing starts to come back to our equation, right? Okay. So what we're talking about is looking at that formula and making sure the charges even out. Okay. So we're going to even it, for lack of a better word. Okay. This is where Greg could speak up with a thesaurus and let me know what better word works. Lithium. Even it? Even it? Yeah. Okay. See, he agrees with me. He agrees with me. It's cool. Lithium. <laughs> What's the charge on lithium? Plus one. A plus one. What's the charge on bromide? Negative one. Negative one. Do those charges balance as one and one? Yes. yes. So what does that mean? Like neutral, they neutralize each other? They neutralize their charge. That's a better way than yeah, even it. Like a fair word. Okay. The other issue with neutralize, it's a chemical reaction. Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah. But just because. Okay. So in this context. So what happens? What does that mean? Our product is lithium bromide. That is now the correct formula. Once I have the correct formula, I could then go through and initiate balancing the reaction. You started to say something? So just because bromine can be by itself, no, I'm sorry, it can't be by itself, means you can just take away an element out of the... Ah, so this is where we would move into the next concept. Okay? One of the things that we've kind of skipped, because it's just a factual thing that we'll slide back in at the end of this in a horrible location in retrospect, uh, <laughs> is that we can't create or destroy matter. So if we look at this equation, I start with one lithium and two bromines, and yet what I'm ending with is one lithium and one bromine. Somehow I have exploded out of existence a bromine atom. Am I allowed to destroy matter? No. It's, no. it's going to some other part of it. Different. It has Somehow to find or another, else to connect. it has to connect somewhere. This equation is not yet valid because it's not balanced. I have to match it to the physical laws of not destroying matter. That means now that I've got my proper formulas, I can go through and balance the equation and make sure the equation is valid. Okay. Balancing the equation, let's clean up some space here because of how I would recommend it. This was last week's video. I'd go through and say lithium. How many lithiums on the left? One. Lithiums on the right? One. How many bromines on the left? Bromine's on the right. One. Is that balanced? No. no. So what do you have to do? Add a plus one. Okay. Add, add a plus, plus one. Plus BR. Plus BR. Yeah. That is a possibility. I could adding, go through and do that. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's adding another species. What we're trying to do is stick to the combination. Okay. okay. So this is holding to our combination reaction. I don't want to add another piece here. I want to maintain this general form. Okay. How can so I make sure... Oh, you do two, and then you do two BR. How about I just put a two in front? That would work. That two now applies to the lithium, and it also applies to the bromine. What you were potentially suggesting is adding a lithium and another bromine. No, I was going to say just write L2BR2, but adding the two. There's the other suggestion. I haven't heard that one in a while, which is okay. It's good. Why not write L2BR2? It's an ionic compound. That, by definition, is wrong. Our ionic compounds are always shown in their reduced ratio formula, period. Okay, so we cannot show Li2Br2. We have to write it as LiBr. If I want to make sure that there are two bromines, I have to put a 2 in front. I cannot change the subscript, because if I change the subscript, I've changed the identity of the compound, okay, which could be a problem if I'd already done all the work, which I had already done. I made sure that the lithium and the bromide cancel. I had the correct compound. By changing that subscript, I changed the compound, and everything's now out of whack. So I can only change the coefficient once I start balancing the equation. So I balance the lithium, one. I balance the bromine, two and two. So now I'm done, and I go home. But wait. 
Okay? In our list of things that we're supposed to be doing with our chemical reactions, what were we supposed to do? Check your work. Which means you erase everything and you start again. Lithium's on the left. One. Lithium's on the right. Two. Is that balanced? No. What do you have to do? You need another two on the other side to make that two lithiums. Okay? Bromine on the right. Two. Bromine on the left. Two. Is the bromine balanced? Yes. What do you do now? Lithium's on the left. Two. Lithium's on the right. Two. Bromine on the right. Two. Bromine on the left. Two. What do you do now? Nice. Lithium's on the left. Two. Lithium's on the right. Two. Bromine's on the right. Two. Bromine's on the left. Two. What do you do now? Do it again. Ooh. Do what again? What? Check your work again? Check your work again. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Do it. Good job. It might be different now. Lithium's on the left. Lithium's on the right. Chlorine's on the right. Chlorine? None. Good catch. Bromine's on the right. What do you do now? You don't answer. I'm going to lecture through my head the content and not tell you what I'm saying. What's that? We don't need to add a 1. That's implied. That becomes useful information later, so I'll go ahead and write that in. That's not true. You absolutely do know the answer to this. Are you frustrated yet with checking all your work? Just a smidge, right? You're starting to get irritated, right? What does that mean you're going to start to do with this process? Get angry at me. And now what you will do is remember to freaking check your work so that whenever you do a chemical reaction, you know you're right. There's not this, oh, I don't know if I'm right or not. You leave the test, I got it all right, or you leave the test, I got it all wrong. There's no in-between because you're checking your work. You need to check your work so often that you are irritated with me. That's what I want. Okay? I accept that. Be angry. Get it right. If you followed this process through, it should already be at the smallest whole number, okay, by slowly scaling up. Okay? It's not a bad idea to check, but it should already be there. Okay? That repetitive process of checking your work is the step that most students want to skip, okay? which is great because when I write the exam question, I'll go through and write the exam question and provide an answer that is only half solved. You go, oh, well, it totals up. The answer matches one of the multiple choice. That must be the right one. No, Mike's a, not a nice person. Mm. Okay? And I put in that exact number. Check your work, and you don't run into that issue. Does that make sense? Okay. Please, check your work with the balancing. Okay. So the exam question would be, Is this a combination reaction? Yeah. Yes. That was a true-false question, so that's not very useful. I could say, what type of chemical reaction is this? We've got six to choose from. I'll pick five. Cool. Is we still come to combination. What else could I ask? What is What is the product? <laughs> And Braxton will help us out there with that answer. What is the product of this chemical reaction? Oh, it's absolutely still recording. No. It's an invalid question. That does not get asked. Why not? You're not responsible for predicting the products of a combination reaction. 
if I gave you this chemical reaction, I'm not going to say what's the product because I'm, I am running the assumption that you know the product is always on the right-hand side. Right? So you is won't that, that see a combination. Just that is true of all combination reactions. I do not expect you to predict reactions. the products. All reactions are your products on the right-hand side. You said the single, double combustion and neutralization. Single, double, all of those. All the chemical reactions you've seen, where are your products? On the right side. On the right-hand side. For the sake of this class, yes, they're always on the right-hand side. In the real world? Mostly. Mostly. So we have to know. You have to know that your products for this class, for all your reactions, are on the right-hand side of the arrow. Combination reactions, you're not responsible for knowing the product, so don't worry about it. Just combination. Or? You just have decomposition. Decomposition. You have, to be able to it. you have to be able to recognize it. I can still ask questions. What other questions could I ask about this? Coefficients. What is the sum of the coefficients of the balanced equation? Okay. Once you have the equation, you could go through and now answer that question. Multiple choice answers for this would be A, 1, 2, 3, four. Hey, we're on a pattern, why not? Where did the 1 come from? There's a 1 in my balanced equation, so that must be the answer. There's a 2 in my balanced equation, so that must be the answer. No. Oh, but 2 shows up twice, and if I add 2 and 2, I would get 4. No. 3? So, on the, before you, like, split it, you did, like, a question, like, what's the coefficient? I only thought it was for, like, that one side, so I would have put 3 the first time. And so this is why I asked the question in the video and why I'm reiterating it now. The sum of the coefficients for the balanced equation is the coefficient on, in front of every single num thing. So that means the 2. That means this 2. And that also means, as V pointed out, the 1 here, which is very often implied. If we add all of those coefficients up, that's where we get our final answer of 5. Make sense? This is why we want to avoid putting the Li2, Br2. This is why you want to avoid writing Li2, Br2, because that then wouldn't balance the equation properly, because you're writing the incorrect formula. You've done nomenclature wrong. Okay. Is that why you can't write uh, the diatomic element Br2 as 2Br? So True. Yep. 2Br is not Br2. Are there any other diatomic elements? Yes, there are several. We'll talk about them. Next one, what type of chemical reaction? What does sodium hydrogen carbonate decompose into? Decomposition. How do you know that? Because you read the question. Can you say that again? I was looking at Greg when I said it. He didn't know Oh, okay. He just wanted to make sure I, he got it. The root word behind it. We've got a decomposition. Next one. <laughs> It's again challenging because we have text. Sodium chloride aqueous reacts with plus lithium nitrate aqueous produces. Ah, well, this is one you have to know. Right? It may not be explicitly told to you, but you have to know this one, so I'm not telling you. Which one of our equations matches the general format shown? This is only the double replacement. And in the double replacement, we exchange the pieces, and we would end up with sodium with nitrate, and we'd end up with lithium with chloride. Did I draw the correct products? Charge on sodium is a plus one. The charge on nitrate is a minus one. I need one of each? Yeah. Sodium nitrate is the correct formula. Lithium is? A plus one. Chloride is? A minus one. Did I draw the correct product? Yes. This was a double replacement. Being a double replacement, you were expected to be able to predict the products in this one, which we just went through and did. What else are you expected to predict? The phases. What is the phase on sodium nitrate? 
aqueous. How do you know it's aqueous? Our solubility rules, which in the video I told you, uh, hopefully in the, I did it in the video. I think which, I did. Which video? The last one, not this week, but the one before that. Okay? That you needed to memorize certain solubility rules. Okay? The most important one to memorize, group one metals, always aqueous. Where is sodium? In the very first column, it's a group one metal. It is always soluble. That makes it aqueous. Lithium chloride? Aqueous. aqueous because of lithium being a group one metal. Okay, so we know both of those are aqueous, which then takes us to our next layer behind this. Did a chemical reaction occur? No. Why is there no chemical reaction? Okay. We don't see a change in phase. So it goes back to being able to identify what a chemical change is. With no change in phase, we do not see a chemical reaction. End game. Make sense? Okay. So I'm going to kind of trust that. We're going to jump into looking at our chemical reactions a little bit. Back in Chapter 3, we had qualitative and quantitative. We had physical properties and chemical properties. Really, the part that I wanted to get to was looking at our physical and chemical changes. Okay. The physical changes are things that can be measured or monitored where it doesn't change the chemical composition. And as we talked about way back at the beginning of the semester, that's a really hard thing for you to do because at the beginning of the semester, we didn't even know what chemicals were. Now we do, which means we have the ability to interpret physical change from chemical change to at least a greater extent than we did in the past. Okay. The evidence for chemical reactions. The big red heading, because you've already seen this slide. Change in phase, permanent color change, and energy change is observed. I put a pot of water on the stove. I turn on the stove. What happens to the water? It gets hot. Is that an energy change? Is that a chemical change? No. Why not? Why did it get hot? I added heat. That's a physical change. I am physically incorporating that heat. I take two liquids at room temperature, I mix them, and I see a phase change. Or the solutions get hot. I take hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide in the lab. I mix them. What happened to that solution? It got hot. Why did it get hot? Because the chemicals supply the energy. That is now a chemical change. Okay? Color change. Okay? I spill food coloring uh, on my shirt. What happened to the color of my shirt? Changed. It changed. Chemical or physical? Physical. Okay? It's a dilution of the food coloring. It is now staining the shirt as a dilution. Same thing with our cake frosting. If I now mix two clear liquids together and all of a sudden it turns yellow, that's now a chemical change. What supplied the energy to change the color? That was the chemicals. Okay. Phase change, pot of water on the stove, turn on the heat. What happens? The water heats up till eventually it boils. What's happening when it boils? Technically not evaporating. It's turning into a gas. Do we have a phase change? Yes. Chemical or physical? That is now physical. Why is that still physical? That's still a phase change. I supplied the energy into it to force the phase change. And if I collected the gas, what happens? If I cool that gas down? It changes back. So when we're looking at our chemical and physical, we have these kind of big signifiers. Okay? Part of it is a reversibility. It's not perfect, but an aspect behind physical and chemical changes is reversibility. Physical is typically reversible. Chemical, typically irreversible. Okay? Is that a hand? Yeah, because, for example, your theory of uh, you adding the heat, the mm -hmm. 
What if you add heat to a chemical and that chemical changes color? So in that case, we have a change. I would say it's easier to do the gas change. Okay, so we add heat to a chemical, a solid, and we see a gas come out of it. Okay, what happens when I collect said gas? If I cool that gas and I get my substance back, I've now shown a reversibility behind it. That means physical. What happens if I collect that gas and cool it down and I don't get any substance back? Now it's a chemical change. Well, if you don't have the ability to collect the gas, and check it. if you don't have the ability to make the observation, can you decide between chemical and physical? No, no because you don't have the ability to make the observation. Okay, so you have to have that ability. That's implicit in all of these questions. So there are some pretty pictures. So chemical or physical. When we talk about this, we look at it as a black and white system, right? It's either chemical or it's physical. So let's take a look at some examples here. Melting ice. Physical. Physical. Dissolving sugar. Physical. Burning wood. Chemical. 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 Dissolving salt. Physical. Chemical. Mixing red food dye with white cake frosting. Physical. Physical. Last one. We're starting with a yellow crystal. By exposure to light, it turns purple. We're always going to encounter those oddball things that we can't quite nail down. Guess what's happening there? It's a chemical change. Okay, Just kind of a neat little molecule. Anybody have those sunglasses or shirts that you go outside and it changes the color of the lens? Mm -hmm. Thank you, chemistry. Um, that's what's happening. By exposure to a little bit of light, it changes the structure, which changes how it interacts with light, and we see a color change. Okay? The chemical structure changes. Okay? So let's go back to the other one that was kind of weird. Is that not with heat? adding heat, though, because you're adding heat light? Heat can do it, too. Both of them. It depends. Dissolving sugar. Describe what we're dissolving in. Water. What are we dissolving in when we dissolve sugar? Water. 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 Okay. Describe water to me. It's H2O. Sure, it's H2O. So I look at it and go, oh, that's H2O. Liquid. It's clear. a clear, colorless liquid. What is sugar? It's Sweet. Not that answer. Try again. It's a white. A white, crystalline solid. Okay, so I add those two together and I end up with a clear, colorless liquid. Okay, or clear, colorless solution, technically. Let's take a look at dissolving salt. What am I dissolving into? Water. Describe water. Clear. Clear colorless liquid. liquid. What is salt? White. A white crystalline no. solid. What is the difference in phases between dissolving sugar and dissolving salt? Absolutely nothing as far as the phases. All the observations are identical. And yet, for some reason, I'm telling you dissolving salt is a chemical change. What happens when we dissolve salt? We end up with sodium ions and chloride ions. Okay. Um, so like the water like, breaks them apart and allows them to exist separately from each other? The water breaks what apart? The bond between The them. what kind of bond? Ionic. The ionic bond. Give me another word to describe it. Ionic is good. I'm looking for a C, but not covalent. It's definitely ionic. It is an ionic bond. Combination? The name of this class. Chemical bond? It's a chemical bond. Yes. I'm breaking a chemical bond. It's a chemical By definition, reaction. that is a chemical reaction. Did we have the ability to observe that? No. No. How do we know that's going on? We have to apply our understanding of chemical reactions and come up with other ways to test those to figure out that dissolving salt is a chemical reaction. Why it's so hard to change salt water into drinkable water? Uh, it's not so hard. It just takes a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, and so dissolving sugar isn't a chemical reaction it because the not, sugar stays together? The sugar stays as a sugar molecule, okay. yes. Cool. Okay. And, then just like and a lot of that has to do with the bond nature in sodium chloride. The bond nature of sodium chloride is ionic. The bond nature in sugar, it is covalent. They have different bond characteristics, which means when they hit water, they do slightly different things. 
those slightly different things, yes, we have the ability to observe, but we'll talk about that at the end of the semester. It's not really a decomposition. It looks kind of like it, but it doesn't quite. It's kind of a weird gray area one for that. So when you add heat to it, right, solution, uh -huh. the water evaporates. Um, Are both of these processes reversible? Yes. That doesn't change the identity of dissolving salt. Dissolving salt is still a chemical change. The issue that comes up is that we're now trying to differentiate or label these things according to chemical or physical, black or white. Is everything black and white? No. It's actually a spectrum. And guess where sodium chloride, dissolving salt, falls in that spectrum? right in the middle of that spectrum, which makes it very difficult to differentiate whether it's chemical or physical. Why not The more we process, <laughs> the more we learn about these things, the harder it can become to differentiate because we start to realize it is not just a black and white system. Yeah. Hi. Okay. We talked about that in the writing side of things, about how some of these things are Oh, yeah. States of matter, we'll have to specify our states of matter. So when we look at a chemical equation, we've got a bunch of stuff in it. Again, with the red heading on it, so you guys are all familiar with everything on this slide, right? No questions? You're like, yep, that was born, totally understood it. Cool. What, it was in the video. Yep. Salt water? So the salt water solution is one of the um, few chemical chains. Um, it is a chemical change. It's yeah. one of the few that is reversible? Uh, talk to me after class. So it's a harder question there, than you want. Why is there an arrow for iron being a catalyst instead of being a plus iron? When we go through and look at these, so there's an interesting observation. If we take a look, we've got a reaction arrow, two reaction arrows in our key here, one with a delta symbol and one with Fe over the top. Okay, so a question was made, why don't we just write iron in as a plus iron? Yeah. So instead of there being like an Fe over that arrow, say there's like a plus Fe. The reason behind this is that iron is a catalyst, and catalysts' roles in reaction do not get consumed, which means if I write iron there, what also has to happen? It has to be on the other side. I also have to write it on the other side. Okay. Chemists are inherently lazy. I don't want to write it twice. I'm going to write it once over the arrow. So it's just in the middle, so everyone knows it's on both sides. Yep. Uh, and unfortunately, that is not a standard description for catalysts. The standard description for catalysts would be to write Fe in the middle and then write CAT for okay. catalyst. So, okay. so in, the, in the word problems, would they include the heat or iron as a catalyst? That could be written into the word question, yeah. Okay. Can you put this on that? Like all those symbols? Probably not directly, but it just doesn't make sense. You have to know them to get access to that information. Directly, no. Prost went through and said law of definite composition. That's about all I really want to say there. He just noticed that there was a consistent mass relation when we looked at individual compounds. Dalton took that a step further and came up with Dalton's laws. Okay, so let's look at another chemical reaction here. Solid sodium hydride reacts with acetic acid to produce aqueous sodium acetate and hydrogen gas. What kind of chemical reaction is that? That should have taken a really long time, right? Because what do you need to do? I don't know what identify all of them. That's a vague pronoun. Write what out. I don't know what it is. Write out the full chemical reaction. Do all of your nomenclature to come to symbols. Yeah, so it has acids in it, so can't you assume that's a new composition? Not necessarily. At least not within the context of what you guys have. What is the symbol for sodium? What is the symbol for hydride? That one's a little bit weird. It's just H. Okay. It says solid. Reacts with? Plus. Acetic acid. It says acid, which means? 
has H and AQ. What's the rest of it got? I'm going to have to write that later. It does not show the word hydro, which means this is a ternary acid. The ternary acids have our root name. The ick comes from the eight. I ate too much, so I got sick. So what we're looking for it, for our complex ion is acetate. I wonder if that was one that Mike told you to memorize. Yes. It was. God, what a horrible person. C2H3O2. AQ to produce aqueous sodium acetate. What was our sodium? I did red. C2H3O2 aqueous plus, I hate it when I don't match lines. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. H. G. Why'd you say H2? Diatomic. Hydrogen is a diatomic gas, so when hydrogen is all by itself, you must specify it as H2. I wrote it out as NaC2H3O2. Is that formula correct? How do I know it's correct? Charges. What charges? The charges cancel. That formula is correct. Is this formula correct for acetic acid? Charge on hydrogen. Plus one, acetate. Minus one, is that formula correct? Yes. Formula, is that formula correct? Hydrogen is, sorry, sodium is? Hydrogen is? Ooh, minus one, and I heard a plus one. If it was plus one, is my formula correct? No. No, would my formula ever be correct? No. No, what the hell? Hydrogen can be either. Why can hydrogen be either a negative one or a plus one? Remember, our common charges come back to trying to look like the noble gas, or really trying to look like anything in the noble gas column. What is above helium? A zero noble gas, if you will. For hydrogen to carry a plus one charge, what happened to it? It's trying to look like nothing. the zero element. If it looks like helium, what has to happen to it? It would have to gain an electron. So hydrogen has two states. It can jump to either the plus one or the minus one, both of them equally valid for it, as far as you're concerned. Right? So typically, hydrogen is a plus one due to its very low electronegativity. Okay? So it almost always gives up its electrons. But there are a few cases where it won't particularly when it's connected to a metal. So we now have our proper formula. Everything is balanced, and we could go through and answer the original question, which was, what type of chemical reaction was this? Neutralization. neutralization. Look at our neutralization formula, please. In our neutralization formula, we have HA, where do we have it? Uh, yeah, here we go. HA plus... BOH to produce H2O and not CO2. So let's just erase that and say something else. Hi. So it's not neutralization for what reason? Because it does not have um, the H. It has no OH. Okay. For anybody watching this video at home that knows something about chemistry, or any of you that knows something about chemistry and say, but, but isn't that a neutralization? Everywhere but this class. Yes. Okay. In this class, that does not fit the pattern that we're working with. So the knowledge that you guys have, that does not fit the neutralization reaction. Okay. We're missing too many pieces. No OH and no water. So if it's not a neutralization, what is it? Single replacement. Single replacement means I exchange only one piece. Did I move only one piece? No. 
I exchanged the sodium for that hydrogen. So I ended up with H bonded to H and sodium bonded to C2H3O2, which is a double replacement. A double replacement. Okay. Kind of makes sense? Okay. So if we whip through that, diatomic molecules. This goes back to our hydrogen. There are a couple little things. Remember, I'm not a big fan of mnemonic devices. There's a few of them that have stuck with me through my career. Leo says GER, which you all are aware of because you watched that video, and that's only because that's my astrological sign. So it stuck. <laughs> right? The other one is for the diatomic molecules. Have no fear of ice cold beer. I probably learned this one in high school and was like, <laughs> beer. <laughs> and now it's stuck, and I have to live with it the rest of my life. Okay. Oil. oil rig is a horrible oil thing, rig. man. Come on. Environmentalists. Have hydrogen, no nitrogen, fear, fluorine of oxygen, ice, iodine, cold, chlorine, beer, bromine. Are there elements that begin with C that are not chlorine? Yes. yes. It's not a perfect device system, but it works pretty well. Chilled beer? It, it's still C and not an L. It's a CH. And our symbol for chlorine is? Yeah. Yeah. So. Ice clean beer? <laughs> Let's just avoid that. Okay, so that's one mnemonic device. You're responsible for knowing those seven elements, however you want to do it. The other devices that come out, let's identify our seven elements. We had nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. That looks an awful lot like what number? Seven. Seven. How many elements did I circle? Six, that's not seven. Oh, that's right, because I forgot one. There's your seven. That works. The other option? Insanely rare out here. Yeah, you could just straight up memorize it. Insanely rare out here. Okay, but there are a couple people that uh, do this as well. Okay. It kind of looks like a hockey stick and a puck. A, a tutor apparently played hockey and was like, oh, that's totally a hockey stick and a puck. And you even, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Any way you memorize it, I don't care. Okay. But you need to memorize that when those elements are isolated by itself, it is always in its diatomic state. So, for instance, on the last page of the nomenclature packet, where it asks for the formula for chlorine gas, you would write Cl2, not Cl. Okay. Right. Yeah, officially. Balancing chemical reactions. This was all in the video. You should have recognized this. We have to make sure the same, our elements show up the same on both sides, same number. Can I change where those atoms are connected? What? Can I change how my atoms are connected in a chemical reaction? No, I'm not allowed to change where the chemicals are connected in a chemical reaction? That doesn't make sense? You're saying yeah? Why? I'm not sure what you're asking necessarily. If it's a chemical reaction, isn't it changing? Like, it's not... If, in it, if it's a chemical reaction, aren't I changing the bonds? Yes. Yes. That's why we have the field of chemistry. Am I allowed to change where the atoms are connected? Yes. By definition, they should. Okay. Like before you like, like, like no, you're no, just, just looking beginning and end, beginning and end, and we will change properties. That's part of this, okay? Because you're changing to a new species, okay? Guidelines for balancing. There it is. Check your work number six. Repeat your steps a whole bunch of times. Get irritated. Get angry. Get it right. Okay. Sounds like a charge, a little cheer. Balancing chemical equations, do you guys want to give one of these a shot? From what I remember, the third one was one that you were supposed to solve on the quiz or in that video thing, right? Did you get it right? Yeah. We got one, yeah. Two right. Okay, that sounds like a lot of you got it wrong. So maybe what we should do is go through and 
do it. First element, aluminum. How many aluminums on the left? Two, two. two on the right. One. One. Is it balanced? No. No. What do you need to do? Put a two as your coefficient because we're balancing the equation. We have to. We can only change the coefficients. Next element. You're changing that? Yes. To, we're going to be painful. Sulfur. How many sulfurs on the left? One. Three. Okay. There's one within the parentheses, but there's a three that applies to that parentheses. So everything within the parentheses is tripled. There are three sulfurs on the left. How many sulfurs on the right? One. One. You started to say, so there would be? So there would be 12 oxygens. We'll get to oxygen that, later. We'll get to oxygen later, I promise. Do you, do you like identifying the elements? Oh, we'll get to that so. later. Is sulfur balanced? No. no. What do you need to do? Put a three in the... This needs to become a three, so I can put a three here. Okay. Now, what's the next element? Oxygen, barium. Why barium, not oxygen? You save the oxygen for the last. Leave the oxygen for the very end. Okay, it doesn't have to be oxygen, but oxygen in this case is going to be one of the ones that we would leave at the very end. It shows up in everything. Okay, oxygen typically shows up in everything, which is why we say save oxygen, but it doesn't have to be oxygen. Any element that shows up in more than one place on each side of the equation you want to save for the end because it becomes a pain. Because really what we're hoping for is that it will balance on its own. Okay? So if it doesn't, then we have to go through and deal with hell. Yeah. Barium. On the left, there is one. Why are there not two? I see a two there. The two only applies to what's immediately in front. What's immediately in front is the parentheses. On the right, three. Okay, but there's only a one there. The three applies to everything afterwards. Right. So how do I fix that? I need a three in front of the barium over there. That becomes a three. Now what do I do? I got nitrogen. How many nitrogens on the left? Two. No, sorry, two. Two, six. <laughs> Eight. There's one nitrogen in our formula, but it's behind the parentheses. The two applies forward, so there's two nitrogens. The three applies backwards, so there are six nitrogens. Okay. Move to the far right. How many nitrogens do we have? We have the nitrogen showing up once. We have the parentheses. There's three of them, but there's two applying back, and I have six. That was a lot of pain, but at least it equaled out. Okay, and now we'd move to our favorite one, oxygen. How many oxygens on the left? There's four in our sulfate, but there's a three applying back, which means 12. There's a three inside our nitrate, but there's two applying back, so that's six, but there's three applying back, so this becomes 18, 12 and 18, 30. Far right, we got three from our nitrate, we've got the three applying forwards, so that's nine, with the two applying back, gets me 18. In sulfate, I have the 4 from sulfate, but I have the 3 applying back, and I get 12, and I get 30. And thank goodness, 30 equals 30. The oxygen's balanced. I don't have to deal with them. Okay. A lot of work gets shown. Do you have to show all the work? No. A lot of this can be done internally with practice. But you have to practice. How do you practice? This is why I'm showing you. I just showed you how you practice. There was a hand. There was not a hand. 
I, oh, there was a hint. What about the aluminum at the beginning? So we just went through and did our steps, but what did we fail to do? Check. So we can go back and check. So this is where it gets fun. By checking, I need to go through and, oh, really? Yep, yep, yep. This is exactly what you need to do. All that work just disappears. Yep, yep. At least you didn't write it. <laughs> and we can now check our work. Aluminum's on the left. Two, Two from our formula. Aluminum's on the right. Two. Two. The aluminum's did balance. Okay. Is it blank? And v can answer this. No, there's technically a one there. If it was a zero, then why did we write anything afterwards? Because zero times whatever that was would make it disappear. So there's an implied one. If you want to make sure you include that one, by all means, go ahead and do so. It is not a requirement for the exam either. You are required to realize that it is a one so that when I ask the questions, the sum of the coefficients, your answer is nine and not eight because it's one plus three plus two, plus three. Make sense? Okay. But since we said we'd check our work, we're going to go through and check it. Oh, really? Yeah. Except I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to balance sulfur and oxygen. I want to balance it as sulfate. Can I do that? Yes. As long as it doesn't change its identity through the course of the reaction, I'm fine to balance it any way I want. Does sulfate show up the same on both sides? Yes, it's connected to something different, but it is still sulfate. How many sulfates on the left? Three. How many sulfates on the right? Three. Barium's on the left. Three. Barium's on the right. Three. Nitrates. Six. Six and six. six. So if you had done sulfate from the beginning, if I had done sulfate from the beginning, it would have worked just the same. Okay. Nothing okay. changes about it. So it's up to you which you want to do. Some students insist that they have to balance the elements. I find that crazy, personally. Sorry. So you suggest right. I would always suggest balance the complex ion. Right. So let's take a look at the last one. Let's just think about a setup on this. Can I go through and balance this as hydrogen and CO3? Mm -hmm. But CO3 is a complex ion. We have to see CO3 on the right-hand side. Do I have carbonate? No. no. This means I have to balance by the element. I don't have a choice. Okay. It must show up the same on both sides. Make sense? Okay. And yes, it was balanced. So there's our classifying chemical reactions. We're going to skip nomenclature practice for today. Our combinations... We've gone through, I believe, the combinations enough that I think we can just kind of let that die, sort of. You will go through and review those and be able to identify them. Okay? The predicting here is all, I'm only expecting you to be able to predict on this slide because why? I give you rules that you follow. The textbook gives you those rules. You're not responsible for them on the exam. You're responsible for them in the homework. Okay. So there are some practice on the combination. Same deal with the decomposition. Okay. If you play around with those, you can see that there are other examples. They give you setups. Okay. If you're given the rule, you should be able to predict. That's how it works. Okay. And this is where we fall into our single replacements. Okay. The interesting one that I want to look at here is, let's take a look at the last one. Solid gold plus copper sulfate. Okay. How much of what I just said was correct? Wait, what did you say? I said gold reacts with copper sulfate. Gold is correct. Reacts with is correct. Copper sulfate? Wrong. Because? You didn't specify which copper. Copper 